This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and you realise how fucking garbage this content is. But if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute fucking loser. Seriously, you should have anything better to do with your time. But I suppose since you're here, I should say a very big thank you for making it along to watch this content. Now for today's video, I'm sure you're very well aware because you've already clicked on it, so I assume you know what you're in for. But if you don't, you're here to take a look at my updated Invoked Dogmatica deck profile. And we're going to discuss all the positives and negatives of the deck at this point in the format. Now it is worth noting that we are kind of in a mini format in a sense in that we don't really know when the next list is and we have just had a bunch of product change, a bunch of things. So we may well have all of this change in the next two or three weeks at the time of recording the video. So I've got some ideas about what I think doesn't work well and what does. So hopefully that will make you better equipped if you're looking to pick up the deck or maybe you're already playing it and you want some ideas for refinement on your own lists. Now my results with this deck as a whole have been a bit of a mixed bag. I've had some really positive ones and some not so positive ones. Overall though, my results are still very strong. Unfortunately though, we do automatically lose the Flunder and the branded matchup. So that is a big thing to keep in mind if you're thinking of playing the deck. But otherwise we pretty much win them all. I've had no issues with base for the most part and pretty much any other deck isn't really a problem. We are super mid-rangey but really we handle most of those decks pretty well because they've either been crippled or just can't keep up with our resource game. Now before we get stuck into the video, if you haven't already and you're looking to pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There is a link in the description if you go ahead and use that along with the code Rufio15. You'll get a nice 15% discount on your eBay order. But anyway, I've most definitely waffled on enough here, so let's get stuck into the profile and we'll talk about all the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay, so here it is. Here is the list. We're going to get stuck in. Again, we're going to talk about what is good, what is bad, and some of the changes I may make in the coming weeks, although it really does just depend on what happens with the format as a whole. So, we'll start off with the main deck, uh, and then we'll do some a little bit of theory and discussion at the end on things that I do and don't like, and things that I may be considering changing. We'll just see again how things shape up. So, we'll start off with most of all, uh, the kind of standard thing, which is of course our three Alistair. This is our Invoke package. Um, yeah, three Alistair, non-negotiable, because we're playing Invoked. We're playing triple copies of Meltdown. I think you, know, you have to, there's not really a discussion on that. And to invocation there's times where i really wish i could just get away with playing one of this card because opening it on its own is kind of shit um and there's times where i wish i had three so it's one of those things it's, a, it's the old uh the conundrum that you face with this deck but it is what it is i think this package though is about as perfect as it gets and there really isn't much discussion needed on in that on to the dogmatica stuff uh we're playing triple copies of ecclesia um we're playing a single maximus and a single um fleur de -Lis. And then two copies of Servants. So just a quick discussion on this front here. So I was previously playing this with um, a second Maximus as well. It's weird in the in the last like week or so, especially with uh, Brandon being around, we've gone from this being like the best part of the deck to being the worst. Um, Maximus is terrible into that deck. It also does nothing against Flunder. Um, and this engine as a whole doesn't really hurt either of those decks. So... It's really unfortunate because a lot of the ways that you would deal with the opponent stuff is uh, is ways that you just can't really do any more with those decks. It just doesn't work in the same way. This is actually by far the weakest part, and frankly, I kind of want to cut it, um, which is a shame. But the problem is there's not really any better options. So if you're going to play Invoked, this really is the best way to go. I know some people have talked about playing like Branded and stuff. I'll get into that at the end, but I think that's absolutely nonsensical. We'll get to that. But anyway... The point is, this is the engine size that I'm going with. Unfortunately, again, I don't think it's a strong, possibly going to cut down one of these uh, just to reduce the numbers in the deck overall and go for a bit more consistency. There are some decks, of course, where this does auto win against, so it's not that it's terrible all the time. It's just terrible against those two decks, and unfortunately, they are highly represented at the moment. So it just is what it is. Um, we're playing a Dasher, 
a uh, celestial. Apologies about the glare here as well. My other LED ring's not working properly. Um, and two Fusion Destiny. Um, yeah, it's just kind of standard package. I think you have to play it. I think it's too good not to play. And we're playing the Souls package as well. We're just playing two copies of Souls and two copies of Illusion of Chaos. We were previously playing the third Souls to go with this. Um, I reduced it because I wanted the extra space for hand traps. However, I'm very much considering putting that back in. Someone that added consistency. This comes up a little bit and it just gives you an additional way to get into Anaconda. Before, I was also playing Dark the Dark Charm, which I've now cut. However, um, possibly something that might go back in at some point. It just became an extra way to get another body on the field. It can also help get Dark into Graves. You can easily get into Window, which comes up a little bit as well. Um, and it just adds consistency as well because sending your field spell plus a random spell or trap that you don't really care about to draw to is pretty nice in this deck. So, I mean, that, that is like the majority of the kind of standard monsters for the deck. On to hand traps. Uh, we've got all the ghost girls. We've got triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. Uh, generically, just the strongest one. Ghost Bell, absolutely need to play it at the moment. Unfortunately, mixed rarities. Apparently, sponsorship doesn't get you everything. Um, we've got Spook House. We've got the gold one, and we've got the secret one. So, yeah, I mean, they just do whatever you want if you play the, these ones. No one's reading gold cards, and, yeah, this is in one of them funny languages that I don't speak. So, anyway, obviously just crazy strong at the moment. I think you have to play Ghost Bell. Uh, triple copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Still incredibly strong at the moment. I think I would feel really uncomfortable not playing this. Um, and then on to these with Triple Infinite Impermanence again. It's like Vela, just better for the most part. Against Bird and stuff, this is really, really important. Vela obviously doesn't do anything to help you because they do 90% of the combo in your turn because they're dicks. Um, and they're, they're commi commies. They're commies, that's what they are. So anyway, anyway, can't be dealing with those. Um, Triple Prosperity, actually really up for debate whether I still want to play this or not. There is some conflict here with this and Souls. I just wanted the added consistency. For the most part, it doesn't really come up. The unfortunate thing is the extra deck is just so tight that the majority of the time you're only ever going for three unless you've got literally an unplayable hand. Um, and even then, you'll then lose the grind game, which is what this deck's really good at, out-resourcing your opponent. So just something to keep in mind. I'm probably going to cut this, though. I think this is a little bit surplus to requirements, which is a shame because I really like the card. Uh, triple copies of Forbidden Droplet, another card that I had considered. Um, however, this dodges a lot of stuff. It helps your Alistair resolve. Um, it helps you break boards and then kill people with Purgatrio, which comes up an awful lot as well. So I think, yeah, it just needs to stay. It's just too good. Sorry, this light is really bugging me, guys. Apologies. Um, and then on to Power one off. So we've got a single copy of Terraforming. Uh, we play Field Spells. Speaking of Field Spells, we play Mystic Mine as well. Uh, game 1, this is free. Branded don't usually main a uh, Spell and Trap removal. In fact, many decks do not main ways to deal with Mystic Mine. Uh, game 1, so you get a free win and then you just side it after Game 1. Let them side in the back or hate and you just don't care because you're not even playing it. Anyway, uh, Caught by the Grave. Um, yeah, it's Caught by the Grave. Uh, hand traps are everywhere and the added protection does you no harm. And finally, Schism because a one card way to get into Winder seems pretty good to me. That is the main deck, of course. 45 cards, I believe. Um, we'll get into discussion at the end about things I'm looking to change. I won't go into all those details now. For those of you who literally just want to get your list and fuck off, here's your opportunity. I'm going to try and make it as quick as I can for you. Not too quick, though. I want that revenue. Okay, if I could actually pick up my cards, that would help. So, uh, yeah, again, main deck, 45 cards. Uh, we're going to try and cut that down a little bit. Again, we'll get into that discussion in a minute. Um, extra deck, uh, Field Center. Uh, Almirage, you need to play it. Secure Garden, you need to play it. Verte, you need to play it. Um, yeah, not really much to say on these. I think these are pretty self-explanatory. Invoked stuff, uh, double copies of Mechaba. Purgatrio, this card's insane. I wasn't playing this at one point in time, and I'm a fucking idiot. This card's nuts. Uh, Orgradies, this card is absolutely bonkers and everyone forgets about it. And the most common way I end up summoning this is to bait DPE and then use their DPE to make this and life feels good. Um, Shadol stuff. Uh, App Cologne, you need it for the combo. Construct's another good way to recur if this and the other ones don't resolve properly or whatever. It just helps you get the materials back. And this can come up as well, you know, being able to send a light if you uh, summon it off uh, schism and things like that yeah it just comes up a lot of people don't expect you to play it either for some reason and finally winder the reason we even play the package at all uh dpe it's dpe uh starving venom surprise surprise we are having to play super poly it's in the side deck of course but starving venom is basically arguably the best target i mean you can make the argument for the predator plant one um dragostopalia i think it is yeah, it's up to you. And if you can find the space, definitely cut it and add the Dracus to Palea as well, because having multiple targets is obviously great. I just, at the moment, can't really figure out what to do with it. Uh, Titanoclad, yeah, for the combo. Entis for popping cards. 
and Omega, another really good option for your Maximus and the Deer Dumps. Um, helps deal with DPE if you can't get to an Invocation. Helps deal with any kind of weird graveyard effects, which can come up an awful lot. And of course, you can put back your own stuff, which is really cute as well. And that is it for the extra deck. Unfortunately, too tight as always. We wish we had more space. We unfortunately do not, so we'll have to do. Uh, token. This guy never turns up anymore. Sad life. Um, okay. Uh, side deck, sorry. <laughs> Troll and Lockbird. Triple of those. Um, out of all the hand traps I could really play that go into the side, it was between this and Lancia, really. Um, and I guess Nib, if you count that, but... I think this was just too strong not to play, and we needed stuff to beat the bird matchup because, again, we otherwise just auto-lose it, and we do still lose it most of the time, but we need ways to play. But also, there's other weird rogue decks that this just absolutely shuts off as well, so I think it's the most impactful out of the other hand traps you can play, so that's why I'm playing that. Uh, triple Super Poly, you have no choice. Um, yeah, you really just have to play it if you can, uh, even though with just one target, it's good enough. And, of course, you can always do stuff like Normal Summon Alistair and... You know, uh, just super poly with that and one of your opponent's things into an inv invoke monster. Um, you can also do the same sort of thing with Shadows as well. So it's just stuff to to maybe consider. It, it just has multiple uses and I think you just have to play at the moment. Uh, Cosmic Cyclone is just back row hate. Um, it deals with uh, the Brave Engine. It deals with like weird rogue matchups. It just deals with back row decks. Yeah, it just hits a lot of stuff, so I think you just need to play it. It also means that against, like, Branded, for example, it's not insane, but it can mean that you can banish stuff so it doesn't get recurred, which does come up. Uh, Lightning Storm, these were originally going to actually be Regekis, and again, they were intentionally in there for the Bird matchup. Because Bird, yeah, you just ought to lose to it, but I've played these for now instead, and these have come up a little bit, of course, because they double up as back or hate is quite nice as well. Regekis, yeah, Regekis are probably what I would actually swap this out for, but we just haven't had any available, so Lightning Storms it is. And again, there's matchups where people just don't really think about it and it, it just it blows out. There's weird games where this has come up where I keep it in the main where I don't feel like I'm making even trades with my opponent where I feel like they've got a very resourceful deck. And this is just a really good way to punish the one card for multiple. Especially if they play like two or three back row cards. You can just blow them out and suddenly you've got one for three. Um, so it's pretty nice. And then the final card in our side deck is there can be only one. I wasn't playing this before. I was actually going to play the Zombie World Package. But I couldn't figure out good ways to get to Nacro or Banshee, and really the only way I could get to it was Terraforming, uh, which didn't make much sense, whereas this does literally the same job. Um, but it also hit, hurts other decks as well. So Bird lose to this, but so do loads of other decks, and you don't really care as much. So Yeah, this has been in since, and again, it's won me a few games since, so I can't really complain. There's not really many games where it's come up and been bad, other than ones where I've sided it in and it's been unnecessary. So um, that does round off the deck overall. Uh, I did just want to quickly talk about things that I might change in here so you've got some ideas. So the first of these, of course, is to cut the Ecclesia down by one. Uh, and probably the pots are going to come out as well. I'll possibly add the third souls and the prep in, uh, which will cut me by about three cards or so. So it'll be like 42 for a bit more consistency. The Dogmatica stuff isn't great at the moment. It has games where it's insane. It has games where it's terrible. Um, it really just... Just depends on what events you're going to. If you're playing at your locals, you probably don't care as much. But at regionals, it is something to really keep in mind. Um, I toyed with some of the other variants. So Eldritch was one. Um, I'm not sold on that. Uh, the Mech Knight version, I'm not sold on that either. Uh, the Shadows just aren't as good. Again, they suffer the same fate as this in that they rely on the extra deck and still just thought I lose the bird. Um, and there was another version as well. Oh yeah, the branded version, of course. How could I forget? Uh, so the one that's the hot topic at the moment, I just honestly feel like if you're going to play the branded stuff, just play branded. Play branded Despacito. It's just way better. Like, if you're going to play the deck, just play it properly, right? Don't don't water it down. Like, if you've got a hand with Aliba and, and, and Alistair, what are you doing? You're summoning Aliba. You're not summoning Alistair, right? It's just not happening. Um, I toyed with trying to fit the package in at some point, and I just realized that you just end up at the point where you just want to put so many of the good branded and Despia cards and stuff in, uh, or both, or, you know, even just the branded stuff, or whatever, you, you get the point. You want to fit so many of those cards in that it just stops being an invoke deck. You're just playing the invoke stuff just so you can say you got invoked in there, and it's just weaker. And yeah, there just really isn't any point. So, again, I think if you're going to play that version of the deck, just go ahead and, and stop fooling yourself. You, you're not normal summoning Alistair anymore. You, you're playing Despia, right? So just be real about it. Uh, and that, that's, not, you know, no issue with anyone. If they want to play that version of the deck, that's up to them. Again, I just think if you're going to commit that far, you might as well just play it properly and play it better rather than playing a weaker version of the deck. So anyway, yeah, again, not really sure what I want to do with it at this stage. I actually really enjoy playing the deck, so there's not a problem in that sense. And I'll probably carry on playing it until I can figure out what to do. Again, we may get a format change in like two, three weeks, in which case none of this matters at all. 
But yeah, I just wanted to share my thoughts to you guys. I've got some ideas. Maybe your guys, maybe you've thought of something different. Maybe you've got something that works really well for you that you'd like to try out or you maybe recommend for me to even try out maybe the stuff that you're playing in the deck that I'm not or maybe the things that you figured that work really well or don't work well that I'm playing or not playing and you'd like to suggest those. Of course, leave those down in the comments and let me know. But that is all for today's video. Thank you very much for taking the time to come along. I do really appreciate it. Hopefully, by virtue of the fact that you made it this far into the video, you've enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe, at least hated it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. Whichever one of those categories you fall into, thank you very much for making it this far into the video. I do really, genuinely appreciate it. So thank you very much for coming along. Again, hopefully you've hit subscribe, or maybe even the notification bell as well. And I'll see you in the next one.